Hello, hello. A little bit of, a little bit of, what's that called? ASMR for you guys. Anyway, that was a glove given to me to uh, use at the gas station today. Take care of yourself. Wash your hands. Do the thing so you don't get messy. Okay, so um, I'm not feeling 100% today. So I kind of don't want to put my face on camera, but I'll put my hands on camera. And I still want to get you guys going with what we did today. I think this is how I'm just going to do it from here on out. I feel like I can walk you guys through it a little easier doing this. So first and foremost, what are we doing for ELA today? We are still reading. Nothing too crazy happening in this chapter is except there is. Just kidding. There's always something. And look at my colors. Ooh, colors. Okay. So uh, here we go. Maniac. ELA. We're still reading. Maniac McGee. I feel like I have more control to when I'm doing it like this. We are reading chapters 40 through 41 today. Super simple. Our word of the day today was persist. Persist. Now, if you have also been doing your um, grammar, your Quizlet, you will know what this word means and it can have multiple meanings. So make sure that you are understanding to persist, to be persistent, to continue, to vocab it. Okay, understand that. And our focus today for our do -do -do, trifold was uh, cause and effect. So cause and effect. I'm glad I chose that because effect is actually part of your uh, grammar today or this week. So make sure you do that too. Um, a cause and effect. So a cause and effect relationship is where one thing makes something else happen. As you read, look for three examples of cause and effect relationships within the chapter. So um, think about how Maniac is integrating people now. So think um, three examples of um, Maniac. Three examples of Maniac's um, actions. Actions, what else happens in this chapter? Actions, um, verbiage, and even his emotions. So what are some things that happen in this chapter that show not only who Maniac is, but maybe other character development? So Mars Bars comes back in this chapter. Um, the brothers are starting to really go a little crazy. They're really noticing that Maniac isn't you know, who they thought they were. So make sure you guys are continuing to read that. Also, yesterday um, we focused on character beliefs. So why do you think that Giant John and his family believe that black families are going to revolt? And do you think it's possible to change his mind? So this was from yesterday. Using this example, if you guys had a hard time. So I wrote, unlike Maniac, they don't have an experience with black people. They see them as trying to take over instead of just living their lives. So remember, in a time of segregation, when it was split, east side, west side, they don't know what it's like to interact with each other. You know, Maniac is just this kid that although he's white, he doesn't see, you know, black as the color. Like we said before, he sees chocolate and auburn and teakwood and all these different like caramel colors and all these different colors of skin which other people are just labeling as black so um recall this go back find some cause and effects and i think you're going to be pleasantly surprised as to what happened in those chapters so make sure you guys do that next we got math 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 and i need my red pen um we are working on do, 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 do. still the chapter review chapter review Review. There. there we go. And yesterday you guys should have done the evaluate an expression. Okay. So if you struggle with that, let me know so that I can make sure to um, get some examples and um, really help you guys out with. I really don't want to write too much on this. There's a little section on the back too. So comparing integers and then we went back to perimeter area and volume. I hope you guys did that. Uh, Uh, the escape room, yeah, with perimeter. It was fun. I did it. But I'm not gonna tell you the answer because you gotta figure that out. But right now we're doing comparing integers, coordinate plane, and perimeter and area. So you guys should be doing one page per day. So this is what you guys are gonna focus on today. I did want to talk to you guys about these little bars. Bloop, the absolute value bars. So remember, absolute value value means to turn it to positive. It does not mean opposite. 
No. No, no. It does not mean opposite. It just means to turn it positive. So a negative 7 with absolute value bars would just become a 7. And a positive 7 with absolute value bars, 7. Okay. Check, check. We're going to do some examples on the back side. All right. So this is what we're focusing on. Integers, graphing, and perimeter area and or volume of the given figure. Okay. There's that. Now, grammar. Thank you, ma'am, again, for reminding me. I wanted to make sure that I put it up and I forgot to schedule it, but it's up there now. So, what are you guys doing for grammar? Well, if you haven't looked at your quill today, there's only one person called me and reminded me, which means that either you didn't check it yet or you just hadn't gotten on there, but you're doing it now. So, yeah, cool. Okay, so we are working on quill.org. And you are doing commonly confused words. Part do, part two, part dos, part tw no, that's three, twice three. So part two, all right? So just make sure you do that. Okay, take your time doing it. I believe there are si five or six sections that I put on here. So they're not super hard. They're they're things you guys have to know. All right, so make sure you go and check that out. Other, other has not really changed. Let's see that color, magenta. Okay, you are still working on Egypt project. Oh, well, it looks beautiful. Project. Okay. Um, also, uh, while you're doing that, what I was looking into was Flipgrid. That was an interesting little app that I looked into. Flipgrid. You guys make your own video response and I think maybe we might do like a whole encompassment of like what were your overall thoughts and feelings about Maniac Mickey when we finish the book on Friday so kind of get a look at that kind of play around with it um as of right now I have a video up there and I'm just asking you a question thinking about um the last question that we did yesterday for Maniac and the Trifold so it was just something different to try out um because guys I don't know how long this is gonna last I don't know but we just gotta finish this week and then we'll focus on whatever else comes out uh, after our spring break in a couple weeks. So we're just, we're gonna focus on this right now. So try that flip right out. Also, um, there was a new math one that I put up there. It's called mangahigh.com. I think it's dot com. Okay, don't be crazy guys, just because it says manga. It's not anime. Sorry, you guys are gonna have to uh, just go check it out. Um, there's one that's on there. It's a spider one and it's about shapes and angles and you actually have to somehow like help the spider. There's my spider. Yep, you gotta help the spider by finding certain angles and doing some neat stuff. So I would go check that out. It looks really fun. It looks cool. It looks fun. And it's new. So I'm just gonna keep like putting things up right there for you guys just to really work on. Um, just to try out and see how you guys like it because uh, this will help me out next year too. So let's just look into doing some new things other than just focusing on having too much fun with Prodigy, which I'm fabulous if you guys are still doing Prodigy. That would be great. Yes, keep doing that. Keep doing Prodigy. Um, but I really wanna make sure that you guys are focusing too on your Egypt project. Uh, finishing your writing, finishing your reading, and working on your grammar and your math stuff. So really focusing on these four things right now. If you're just like super like, okay, I'm done with everything, what else can I do? Go check out Flipgrid, go check out the Manga High, go play Prodigy. There's one more on there that I can't think of off the top of my head at the moment, but it is also a math one. Is it math? It's the one that involves money. Money is always fun. So go check that out because these are all just free for the moment. I'm even looking into getting one more type of Nearpod kind of activity to do, but we will get there when we get there. So right now, I'm gonna flip it over. So we're talking about integers on this week's math lesson. So as of right now, we know that, oops, we know that an integer is a number. Why is my phone going off? In math. Okay, so with mathematics, integer is a whole number. I wanna get this right. Whole number, okay. A whole number, not a fraction. Not a fraction. I think that was really where it came down to that can be positive, negative, or zero. Be positive, negative, or zero. Okay, so that's what it comes right down to when we're talking about integers. So an example of an integer would be two. Let's see. Integers, two, one, um, Negative three, 2,472. Why am I writing all these random numbers? Because they're integers. 
that's why. So again, it is a whole number. So integers, and then we have non, non integers. Yo, can you hear those cars? They cray cray. All right. Um, question two over one. Is that an integer? Well, technically, yes, because it is a whole number, right? So I'm just gonna cross it out. Why am I trying to confuse you? I'm not one half, not an integer. Um, three quarters, not an integer. 1.74, not an integer. Um, negative three and two sevenths, not an integer, okay? Are we able to understand the difference between integers and non-integers? Because if you are, awesome. Just remember, whole and then not whole. As long as you understand it has to be a whole number or zero. Let's make sure you put that too. Zero. And you cannot have a negative zero. I answered your own question before you were even able to ask me. You cannot have a negative zero, but those are examples of non-integers. So I wanted to focus and open this guy up. Pew. Okay, um, I'm just gonna do, let's do number 52. Oh my gosh, 52 problems? No guys, just number 52. Okay, number 52 is the absolute value of negative three and the absolute value of negative two. So simply put, remember, absolute value means to turn into a positive. So this would be three and this would be a two. So on a number line, why am I even doing this? I think you guys can figure it out. One, two, three, four. Remember all of these are negative. I don't have a negative. However, which one's bigger? Obviously I can tell that the three is bigger. However, if it were like this, if I just went off the negative three and the negative two, the negative two would be bigger because it's closer to zero than negative three. But because this is the way that it's trying to ask us, I know that a positive three is bigger than a two, obviously. The dun dun. However, was there one in here where it did try to trick you? Oh no, let's take a look. Go back. Um, let's do number, let's do number 51. I'm all over the place. I have a negative 17 and then I have a negative 14. Even if I don't draw out the whole number line, I'm still gonna do it because I want you guys to see this. I don't need to draw out the whole number line. I don't always have to go back to zero because I know that somewhere over here is zero because everything to the left of zero is a number line. Or sorry, of course it's a number line, but it's negative. So let's start out at negative, uh, let's put negative 13, negative 14, negative 15, negative 16, negative 17, negative 18. Remember too, as I increase, I continue to go to the left. The farther away from zero I get, the bigger my negative number. So in this case, I'm asking myself, here's negative 14, here's negative 17. Which one of these is closest to zero? Is it better to have a negative balance in your bank account of negative $14 or negative $17? Negative balances aren't fun either way, but your answer should be at negative 14. So in this case, the alligator would eat the negative 14 because negative 14 is closer to zero on the number line. Okay, that looks like live, number line. All right, so the closer the number is to zero, the bigger it is. I know that's a weird factoid, especially when it's asking us to do absolute value as well, but this you need to understand, okay? The closer to zero, the bigger the number. All right, I know that's weird, but I know you can do it. Okay, so um, I hope you guys had a good day today. We are on day, I don't even remember anymore. All I know is that it's Tuesday, it's the end of March, and we have officially really hit the point where it's starting to get real, right? I'm sure we're all going to world stir crazy. Um, I hope you guys are staying busy. Um, I hope you're reading your book. I hope you're playing with colors. And I hope that you remember that I miss you and that I still feel that way. And that I love you all. And I think about you all the time, especially when I'm in here. And that you guys know that this is not as important as making sure that you guys stay sane and knowing that I love every single one of you and I miss you terribly. But right now, this is just our life right now. Right now, right now, right now, okay? So have a wonderful evening. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Hopefully you guys are watching this and hopefully you also watch Mr. Jensen's video. Watch his video so that you guys know what's going on. There will be a new video on Thursday, which is the day after tomorrow. So yeah, just make sure that you guys are aware of that, okay? I'll talk to you guys later, bye. Love you, miss you.